Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to have an introduction to vectors and scalars. Everything we measure can be divided into two groups, vectors and scalars. A scalar is a physical quantity that has magnitude only. In other words, it is how big it is, and it has a unit, as in kilograms, but there's no direction. Whereas a vector is a physical quantity with magnitude and direction. So those are your definitions. A scalar is a physical quantity that has only magnitude, whereas a vector is a physical quantity with magnitude and direction. We can basically indicate a vector by representing it with a force. For example, force vector would be F, but we represent the vector with a little arrow above it to show that it is a vector. So now, examples of scalars and vectors. Distance is a scalar, mass, speed, time, and electric charge. In other words, anything that doesn't have direction is a scalar. So, for example, you don't say, oh, the object is six kilograms um, downwards. But you do, and your speed, for example, this is the difference. The speed, you'd say, I'm running at 10 meters per second, full stop. That's it. 10 meters per second is your speed. Your velocity would be 10 meters per second east or 10 meters per second west. You have to have a direction. So examples of vectors are displacement, weight, velocity, and acceleration. Now, if you haven't heard of some of these quantities before, don't panic. Um, we will be going through quite a lot of this in the next few lessons. So just get the idea to your head that you're, I've got scalars and you've got vectors and they're of different categories. Right, let's look at representing a vector. We represent vectors using an arrow. The arrow tells us how big the vector is, so the longer the arrow, the bigger the vector, and it tells us the direction of the vector. So whatever direction the arrow is pointing in, that's the direction of the vector. So there are three ways to represent the directions of the vector quantities. One, we can use a compass. Two, we can use bearings. And three, we can use the direction of a vector relative to another vector. So let's look at that. First of all, the compass. So yeah, you've got your points of your compass, north, south, west, and east. So if we had to look at this vector, vector 1, and we had to, this is 30 degrees, I'm telling you it's 30 degrees. If we had to give it a reference with respect to the points of the compass, it would be 30 degrees north of east. 30 degrees north of east. Here's another one, vector 2, it's pointing down this way. And do you see that this is now 30 degrees east of south, 30 degrees east of south? Okay, we could have also said that this is 60 degrees south of east. Okay, so basically your directions with respect to the compass is you're relating your vector and your degrees to one of the four points. Okay, let's look at bearings. Bearings, you need to understand that on your four points of your compass, we start off with north being naught, then we go along, this is 90 clockwise, please note, that's 180, 270, and back at 360. So, the same vectors, well this one's the same vector, that we were talking about before V1, which was 30 degrees north of east, is actually 60 degrees from north, so we say it's on a bearing, of 60 degrees. So we're reading from north clockwise and it's on a bearing of 60 degrees. V2 in this case, they say is on a bearing of 210 degrees. So we go north 90, 180 plus another 30 to get to a bearing of 210 degrees. Do you, so do you understand that bearings have got the degrees going from north through to 360? Now finally, we have a direction of a vector relative to another vector. In each of the following cases, the vector A is 30 degrees relative to vector B. So do you see it doesn't matter which way the vectors are pointing, we're always saying that the angle between these vectors is 30 degrees. So the direction of the vector is always measured at the tail of the vector. So we're going, that is the direction it's going, that's the direction, and that is 30 degrees. Right, now that you've had the basics of vectors and scalars, we'll continue with this lesson and look more about how we can work with them. Thank you, grade 10s. Have a wonderful day.